think we begin our Hannity Watch on huge, massive political hypocrisy tonight. Now, Democrats, you watch them closely, people on the left, they claim to have a monopoly of compassion. Conservatives are cold-hearted. They're even selfish and greedy because they want low taxes and less government bureau bureaucracy. They say we're mean-spirited for wanting to curtail entitlements. Not true. I don't know Republicans that want to get rid of Social Security or Medicare. That's one of those campaign lies. Uh, or if you don't trust their health care system. Hasn't worked out well. Democrats are always generous, but with other people's money. But when it now comes to what is a real life or death crisis at our southern border, they're nowhere to be found. In fact, the Democrats, the radical left's new talking point is to call what is death and destruction and chaos caused by unsecure borders nothing more than a manufactured crisis. Watch this. President Trump must stop holding the American people hostage, must stop manufacturing a crisis. This president just used the backdrop of the Oval Office to manufacture a crisis. Folks, the president has manufactured one heck of a political crisis for himself. Donald Trump is manufacturing a national security crisis. You will hear them message. say mm -hmm. is that this is a manufactured crisis. It's not a national security crisis. The big scam of the whole address was that there's a crisis. There's mm -hmm. not a crisis. The notion that we have a crisis there, a security crisis, is absolute nonsense. It remains a Seinfeld shutdown. Seinfeld all about, uh, All about nothing. What happens when there is a real crisis, when there is a real emergency? Does he take to the airwaves? Do we give him the airwaves? Do we believe him? There is not a crisis at the border. It's a manufactured crisis for the president to get a political win. He's determined to convince you there is a crisis at the border, even though an intelligence official tells CNN, quote, no one is saying this is a crisis except them. All right, first thing you got to notice is, do you notice how the hate Trump Democrats and the hate Trump media, that they speak in one voice. They have one talking point. Now, tonight we're going to do something. As we promised you at the beginning of the year, you will not see on any other network. And we're going to show you what are real victims of the crisis at our southern border. Look at the side of your screen. Take a look there. Men, women, husbands, wives, children, parents. Those are all human beings that have been killed because we have unsecure southern border. That's that's. Those are real names. That includes police officer Ronald Singh. He was gunned down by that illegal immigrant just after Christmas. And officer Singh leaving behind a wife and a five-month-old baby boy who will never know his father. Democrats, are, they, are you really prepared? The media, Democratic Party, liberals, are you going to look in this man's family's face and tell them that this death is a manufactured crisis? Where have your hearts gone? And earlier this week, we interviewed the parents of this young man, Pierce Corcoran, and he was killed by a suspected illegal immigrant driving on the wrong side of the highway without a license, without insurance, in the country 14 years. A Democrat's going to call the Corcorans and tell them what happened to their son is a manufactured crisis? What about Josh Wilkerson or Dominic Durden or Sergeant Brandon Mendoza or Jamil Shaw or Grant Ronneberger? And I can keep going. Just keep watching the names on the side of your screen tonight. The Democrats really want you to believe this is some grand conspiracy, a manufactured crisis. Now, we do have angel parents, those who have lost their children because of open borders. They are speaking out tonight, and they have done so many times in the past. And they are reminding some of America's politicians and their best friends in the media that this is not a political game for them. This is a crisis, a clear and present danger, real Americans losing real lives needlessly and real family suffering, if you might say a word, permanent separation. Take a look. When you hear uh, Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi last night saying that the president has manufactured a crisis to sell this wall, what's your message to those top Democrats? It may seem manufactured to them because they're sitting safely behind walls, but for those of us out in regular America, we are victims. We are prone to the victimization of illegal aliens in crime. I'm just wondering how many of these people have had their sons, daughters, wives, or husbands life snuffed out by one of these illegal aliens. I'm just wondering if Nancy Pelosi had one of her children or grandchildren assaulted in the same way that my son was assassinated. If she would speak the same way. 
No, I've been to the border, what, 12, 13 times now. Last time I was down with Governor Perry, then governor at the time, sat in a security briefing. 642,000 crimes committed against Texans alone in a seven-year period. In just the past two years alone, 4,000 criminal aliens have been arrested for homicide. In fact, over the past two decades, criminal immigrants have been responsible for tens of thousands of murders. Now, to these families, our fellow Americans, that crisis is always present. Their lives have been devastated, forever altered. Their loved ones murdered. And yet, hate Trump Democrats, hate Trump talking point media people dare to suggest that this is a manufactured crisis? Really? We're talking about an all too common occurrence. It should never happen. Law abiding men and women killed by illegal immigrants that don't respect our laws, our sovereignty, our borders, they shouldn't be here at all. Now, if we secured the borders, lives are going to be saved. People will be protected. There won't be permanent separation, as in the cases we're telling you about. Now, many of these cases, those responsible, they even had long criminal track records. Some had previously been deported, all gaining access because our southern border is wide open. And sadly, this is only one aspect of the crisis at our southern border. Over the past two years, 30,000 criminal aliens arrested for sex crimes, over 100,000 for violent assaults. In 2018, 800 gang mem members apprehended at our southern border. That's a 50% increase over the previous year. Yes, last year, we also saw 122% uh, increase in Fentanyl being smuggled across the southern border. You know fentanyl? That's the drug that's killing Americans every single day in this country. Fentanyl, the deadly substance, often mixed with heroin. Remember heroin? 90% of that smuggled across our southern border. And keep in mind that every seven days, 300 Americans will die from a heroin overdose. That death toll is equal to the number of American troops that were killed every week in Vietnam during 1968. That was the deadliest year of that war. So is that a manufactured crisis? Last year, 17,000 individuals with criminal records apprehended trying to cross the border. 60,000 inadmissible or illegal immigrants turned away from our borders every single month. And over the last few weeks, 20,000 children smuggled or trafficked into the United States. This is not a manufactured crisis or a talking point. Those children matter. Those women matter. Those Americans being killed by addiction matter. We talk about the opioid uh, epidemic in the country all the time. This is a big part of it. And so do the human beings, by the way, on the other side of the border. Totally understand the 98% that want a better life for themselves, their family, their children, their grandchildren. But one out of every three migrant women who make that dangerous trip, try to get into the United States, hoping for a better life, they're sexually assaulted. And seven in 10 migrants have reported being victims of violence during that trek. It's an arduous journey, and an average of 50 children each day require emergency medical care after they arrive at the southern border. And you have thousands of illegal immigrants. They have died trying to cross unfamiliar deserts in unsecured regions of our border. And don't forget about the risks that are posed to our national security. Unvetted, illegal immigrants from all over the world use our unsecured southern border in order to gain access to the United States. Sarah Carter recently took a trip to the border, actually interviewed two individuals. They're from Bangladesh. Take a look. De donde eres? Que país? What country? Bangladesh. Bangladesh? Yes. Bangladesh. How long have you been walking? Uh, three months. Three months, please put your hands down. Hands down, don't worry, don't worry. I'm I'm a journalist. Three months? Yeah. From Bangladesh through Mexico? Yeah. To the United States? Yeah, yeah. Do you know where you're at right now? No. Who brought you here? Who who helped you? Who helped you? As in... Over uh, Mexico? Mexico is as in, I don't know. What was the first country you came after Bangladesh? Bangladesh uh, to uh, transit uh, Dubai and Brazil. Dubai, Brazil, and yeah. then through Central America. Central America. And then up here yeah. to the United States. And you have the media and Democrats telling you this is a manufactured crisis. We're going to have more from Sarah's trip to the border coming up. You're definitely going to want to see what she has discovered. Also, last night, in order to address many of these issues, the president delivered a powerful address, unveiled a plan to fix this crisis. But the left, 
Their friends, their willing accomplices in the media don't seem to care. Look at late night. Seth Meyers actually joking about the devastation at our southern border, tweeting, is the Oval Office SVU? And Socialist Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez even calling for ICE to be abolished. Take a look. Women and children on that border that are trying to seek refuge and seek opportunity in the United States of America with nothing but the shirt on their backs are acting more American than any person who seeks to keep them out. A child died in ICE custody. The president should not be asking for more money to an agency that has systematically violated human rights. The president should be really defending why we are funding such an agency at all. Because right now, what we are seeing is death. Right now, what we are seeing is the violation of human rights. These children and these families are being held in what are, what are called yeleras, which are basically freezing boxes that no person should be maintained in. This is systematic. It is wrong and it is anti-American. Wow. Uh, that's NBC reporting. Ocasio-Cortez, not the only Democrat living in this fantasy world. Yesterday, during an extremely bizarre joint speech worthy of a Saturday Night Live open skit at a shared podium, Speaker Pelosi, Senate Minority Leader Chucky Schumer, literally, they were scowling as they offered zero solutions to the crisis and they started pushing the manufactured crisis line. Is this the liberal compassion that they lecture us about all the time? Do they not care about human beings on both sides of the border? Longtime Democratic strategist, even James Carville, he made a joke about Schumer's forced Democratic rebuttal. He's dead on accurate. Take a look. I don't think they wanted to do it. I don't think they should have done it. And I guarantee you at the staff meeting tomorrow morning, somebody is going to get, you know, <laughs> chewed out pretty good about this whole yes. thing. The only good thing about it, it didn't matter. They could have given a Gettysburg address and it wouldn't have mattered. It didn't, it, it was, it didn't, he didn't want to be. I've been more excited about colonoscopies than he wasn't giving a speech tonight. He, he, he didn't want to be there. Funny and true and accurate, but not really a laughing matter when you talk about the issue. You know, over the course of my career, 30 years in radio, my 23rd year here at Fox, I have interviewed way too many angel moms, dads, brothers and sisters over the years, people that lost children, a pain that most never recover from. And this is the pain in which the president now is looking to solve a problem, opening a door to the White House, urging lawmakers from both sides of both parties to come and negotiate. But during today's meeting, Democrats, again, they're not interested at all. For them, political optics trumps all. Take a look. I want to turn the floor over, the president said, to Speaker Pelosi and Schumer. She again to argue whether we even have a crisis or whether facts are true. Turn to Schumer again, who said, we just have to open the government up. The president then turned to the speaker and politely asked her, OK, Nancy, if we open the government up in 30 days, could we have border security? She raised her hand and said, no, not at all. The president calmly said, I guess you're still not wanting to deal with the problem. The president wants to solve this problem. That's why he continues to bring us down. That's why he's put offers on the table. Not once have the Democrats offered anything back. And the way they have displayed and their behavior is embarrassing to me. In 2006, remember, Democrats had a very different perception and di very different ideas, and they and Republicans came together to fund a partial border wall. They supported it then. The Secure Fence Act allowed over $50 billion over the next two decades to construct and maintain hundreds of miles of new barriers. 64 Democrats in the House voted in favor of the bill, and the Senate passed with overwhelming support, both parties, including Chucky e. Schumer, and then Senator Hillary Clinton, and California Senators Boxer and Feinstein, and even Barack Obama voted to fund the wall. Now, campus reform recently asked college students to react to quotes from several top Democrats who once supported a border wall. They did it with a twist. Take a look. What's your thought on his push for this wall? Um, I am not a fan. Everyone has a shared reaction to this. It's absolutely horrendous. I really don't see a need for it. We should spend money to build a barrier to prevent illegal immigrants from coming in. Another quote, we simply cannot allow people to pour into the U.S. undetected, undocumented, and unchecked. Quote, illegal immigration is wrong, plain and simple. Until the American people are convinced, we will stop future flows of illegal immigration. We'll make no progress. When you hear quotes like that, what's your reaction to them? It's divisive. Um, I think America is a land of opportunity, a place for inclusion. I just really 
think it's a kind of hateful speech in general. It's just a negative message. What if I told you these were from Chuck Schumer, Barack Obama, and Hillary Clinton? How about that? <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Really? Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Trump says that it's bad. Democrats say it is good. Now Trump's president. Now the wall to Democrats is suddenly immoral. Actually, Democrats, what they're doing is playing politics and risking in the process the lives of American citizens just because they don't like Donald Trump, who wants to solve a problem. And yet the solution they once supported is effective. We know the wall works. After the completion of the wall south to San Diego, illegal traffic dropped by approximately 92 percent. The wall in El Paso, Texas, resulted in a significant drop, as it did walls in Tucson and Yuma, Arizona, where they extended one wall from five miles to 65 miles. It drops 95 percent. The president is now requesting one-tenth of one percent of our federal budget to build more strategic barriers. He's also requesting increased border patrol and ICE personnel and an increase in detention capacity and humanitarian resources and counter smuggling tools along with other important technology. This is not a radical plan. It's a plan to keep Americans safe. It addresses what is an urgent, serious crisis. So let me say, I understand, by the way, the concerns. 25% partial government shutdown are furloughed, workers furloughed. Look, I've been there in my life, living paycheck to paycheck. It's not fun. They will and should and deserve to recoup all of their money while they're not working. They deserve it. And this is, though, for others, life and death, literally, preventable death, which makes this all the more frustrating. Officer Singh is gone forever. The Cochrans will never see their son Pierce again. The families of the people you see on the right of your screen throughout the night tonight, they deserve better. These deaths are not manufactured. This is not a manufactured crisis. And the Democrats and their allies in the media, their talking point, frankly, is cold, heartless. It's a lie and, frankly, a slap in the face to every angel mom and dad and family member in this country that have lost loved ones as a result of open borders and illegal immigration or every family that's lost a loved one from a heroin overdose or from other drugs smuggled over the, our wide open borders. The clashes with Border Patrol agents, rocks, bottles thrown, chaos, destruction, they also, that's not manufactured. That's real. Democrats, remember, then it wasn't a manufactured crisis because they were politically bludgeoning Trump over the family separation issue, something that he eventually stopped that had happened in the two previous administrations. It wasn't a manufactured crisis for Democrats or the media when they were bludgeoning our brave Border Patrol officers who had to use tear gas after they were being pelted with rocks and bottles. Remember, the left accused them of gassing children. So if Pelosi, Schumer, the rest of the Democratic Party and the media want to stay on manufactured crisis and allow this to continue and play a political game, the president, he will have the full authority and power to declare a national emergency and tackle this head on with or without congressional funding approval, or he could use the Defense Department. This is about protecting our homeland. But first, it's up to you. Look at the number on your screen. You might want to call, ask your member of Congress or the Senate to hold the line. This is too important. 202-224-3121.